If the ocean is in trouble, we're in trouble. The ocean is in trouble. That means we have some problems. depend on life on Earth, and most of life on Earth is in the sea. Man's perspective on the ocean has always been at the surface. When we look closer, we see that there is a whole other world just below. If we take all the fish from the seas, we will have taken away that discovery from future generations. If we teach people to take a moment and really look, real and tangible change can occur. What was once a normal occurrence is now becoming a special event. To be able to witness a massive schooling ball of fish such as this. A farmer would never dream of over harvesting his field. And yet this is exactly what we are doing to our oceans. Our oceans are in need of balance. Without it they cease to thrive. Pulling fish out of the seas at an alarming rate is quickly destroying this, allowing for a devastating domino effect. How can we expect the oceans to be fruitful if we as a species keep pillaging the next generation? Why on earth we take out and consume vast amounts of eggs, or pregnant fishes, or juvenile stock, is beyond belief. This painting is called Handful of Screams Call Out for Worldwide Protection. It illustrates the issue of the oft-desperate survival of the bluefin tuna. The numbers painted on the fish represent dates. One specifically is 2048, the year predicted when commercial fishing will collapse. We are sucking all the life out of the ocean as though resources are infinite. In truth, we are already scratching the bottom of the barrel. The Food and Agricultural Organization estimates that over 70% of the world's fish species are either exploited or depleted. By capturing fish faster than they can reproduce, we are disrupting entire ecosystems that interact with those species, from the food they eat to the predators that eat them. Targeted fish species are not the only victims. Sometimes, the non-targeted auxiliary animals, which as a group are called bycatch, suffer greatly. Upwards of 8 to 10 pounds of bycatch are sometimes thrown overboard to land one pound of shrimp. All preceding history, it's only in the last few million years, really the last 10,000 years, that people have really gained access to the sea with the ability to, to take on any scale that matters, mostly in the last hundred years, and even more importantly, in the last few decades. As a young boy, well into my adulthood, I lived in what we jokingly called a small drinking town with a fishing problem. The truth, however, is actually quite different, and the development of advanced technologies has afforded fishermen the ability to catch nearly every fish in the sea. When longlining was first instituted, it was not unusual to catch 400 and 500 pound swordfish. Within 40 years, however, consumer demand and modern technology overtook supply. By the 1990s, the Northwest Atlantic fishery was declared overfished and closed for 10 years. Reopened today, Northwest Atlantic swordfish now average 100 pounds. We've taken all the fish from the sea. We've taken the tunas. We've taken the swordfish. Swordfish used to weigh 450 pounds coming out of water. Now the average swordfish coming off a swordfish boat is less than 60 pounds. And there's fewer and fewer and fewer of them. I'm haunted by the vision of 
those in the future who will look back on those of us who are here at the beginning of the 21st century asking, why didn't you do something while there was still time, while there were still bluefin tuna swimming around in the ocean, while there still were great whales, while there still were plenty of sharks in the sea? I feel that you know this could be the generation that could actually create a sea change, an environmental renaissance period. And uh, I'm really inspired. And as I talk to people, young people in particular, about these issues regarding uh, protection of our water planet, I'm very encouraged because they're very creative with their ideas and they care deeply. Uh, they want to be the generation that actually takes action to ensure that we have uh, a healthy planet. We still have an opportunity to secure an enduring future for life in the sea, for life on Earth, for our lives. During the 90s, the local fishermen from a very small town in the Sea of Cortez, Baja California, Mexico, aware of the precarious situation and declining fisheries in their nearby coral reefs, made an unprecedented and brave decision. They stopped all commercial fishing and made the necessary negotiations for this area to be declared a national marine park. The results have been incredible. The fish population increased by 450% and their size are far bigger than the ones outside the park. It produces over a half million tons of fish that every year migrate to adjacent areas, thus benefiting local fisheries. While diving, the scenery resembles of how the oceans were before overfishing, before human predation. I hope the great success of Cabo Pulmo serves as an example for other overfish areas of the world. Alaska hosts two of the most prolific sockeye runs in the world. Our fish populations are amongst the most intensively monitored and managed species and have proven the benefit of such with abundant cyclical runs. Our resilient runs are not threatened by human activities, damming, deforestation, or habitat loss and development. So this is a happy story, until the chapter about international water fishing. Our abundant humpbacks, cohos, chum, sockeye, and chinook runs face their threat offshore where regulation does not exist. With the united international effort, the story of Alaskan salmon, as well as fish stocks worldwide, could have a happy ending.